Hello and welcome to the Now Official. The Now Official will be reviewing different types of works or people or different aspects of things that have impacted the Christian faith through its journey in its 2000 years. And we'll just be looking at that and thanking God for his continuous grace to his people through this journey of faith. So thank you for taking your time to join us to celebrate the people who've gone before us and hope that we can give them their flowers for the work that they've done in the kingdom of God. Episode 3 and today we'll continue in our series in the Believer's Hymn Book and today's hymn we'll be looking at I Will Sing of My Redeemer. This hymn was written by Philip Paul Bliss who lived in the 1800s and will leave a brief description on his life and uh, in the description. So we're going to just uh, read the hymn and then after that we'll break it down. Hymn number 102. And the words of the hymn say, stanza one, I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love for me. On the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. And the chorus says, Sing, or sing of my Redeemer. With his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt, and made me free. Stanza 2. I will tell the wondrous story how my lost estate to save. In his boundless love and mercy, he the ransom freely gave. Stanza 3. I will praise my dear Redeemer. His triumphant power I'll tell. How the victory he has given over sin and death and hell. Stanza 4. I will sing of my Redeemer and his heavenly love to me. He from death to life hath brought me, Son of God, with him to be. So now we can break down the hymn, I will sing of my Redeemer. When we look at this hymn, this hymn brings a joyful reality for the believer. Because the believer is singing these words as well as also exemplifying them in their hearts where they're saying, I will sing of my Redeemer. And it comes to the question, why is the believer singing? And who is this Redeemer? And what is a Redeemer? From scripture, we can see that the Lord Jesus Christ is indeed our Redeemer. A definition of a Redeemer can be said, someone who redeems. And what does he redeem in something of who pays, recovers, saves, or exchange something for something for something else? And this is what we are seeing in Christ Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ has paid our debt of sin. The Lord Jesus Christ has recovered us from the state that we were in because of the sin that's within us. He saved us from the wrath to come and he's exchanged his himself in the sense of he becomes the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world he becomes sin in our place and then he exchanges righteousness towards us and due to this we can truly say that our lord jesus christ has redeemed us redeemed us from the slave market of sin and put us into a new reality which is alive in him so and we'll go through the words and then we can just see what we can get from them. I will sing of my Redeemer. This is the heart of the believer. And his wondrous love for me. So the Redeemer is not just a Redeemer, but he's showing through his redemption and his work on Calvary, his love towards the person who is redeeming. You can only show love by action. So we see a Redeemer who is showing action by him loving us to the point of death the scripture says not just death but death on a cruel cross and that's what we see here he's saying he shows us his love towards us and then it says on the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free 
And this is what the Lord Jesus Christ does for us, within us, for our hearts. He basically restores the brokenness within our hearts by exchanging our heart of stone and giving us a heart of flesh. But ultimately, he exemplifies his love towards us by dying on the cross. And the cross is just not a mere cross. It's a cruel cross. This is a cross that is reserved for notorious people in society. And he takes a sinful death not because of his sin, but because of mankind's sin. And we see that he suffers on our behalf. He exchanges. It says he will take our debt and then he will place it upon him and then he will give us his righteousness. We are at, in a curse and the curse is sin, as it says here, from the curse to set me free. So we are the, in a bondage of sin and that's the curse. Mankind is under a curse because of what we have inherited because of Adam and Eve. And that goes on from generation to generation. And because of that, we are now in a state where condemnation is placed upon us. But for us to be rescued from that curse, the Lord Jesus Christ has to do this work on the cross. So when we're saying he saves us from the curse to set us free, so this actually now amplifies within our hearts of why we are singing of our Redeemer. He has loved us, loved us to the point of death, not just death, death on a cruel cross, and why he has set us free from the bondage of sin. Then the chorus goes and says, Sing, or sing of my Redeemer. With his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt, and made me free. So now this is us amplifying it even more and just rejoicing within our hearts. We're going to sing of what he's done in stanza one. And basically, joyful within our hearts, we're going to sing and continuously sing forevermore because of the redeeming work of Christ. And what does he do? His blood has purchased us from the slave market of sin and has brought us into a new reality where enemies of God now have been considered friends because of what he's done. On the cross, he's put on the cross to take the punishment or for us but also on the cross he seals the pardon he seals the brokenness which is now uh brokenness between man and god and then he now rectifies that brokenness so that when we come into a relationship with god we have a mediator who is indeed christ jesus he paid the debt to set me free and we see that what he does on, does on calvary is him paying that debt of the brokenness of man he becomes sin in our place so that we can become the righteousness of God as scripture tells us. Stanza 2 says, I will tell the wondrous story how my lost estate to save. In his boundless love and mercy, he the ransom freely gave. So now the believer is telling the story of the wondrous love that God has done for him. He says, I was once lost. This is my lost estate was saved by Christ Jesus. We're telling this story of the brokenness within us. How we were once in the depth of sin. How we could not see anything until Christ Jesus came. And that's the beauty of the gospel. The beauty of the gospel says that when we, there was no way, Christ showed up and then helped us out of the darkness that we we're in. Rescued us from that pit of darkness. And he saved us. The lost estate that we were in, we've been saved, renewed, given a new life. And now we have eternal life in Christ Jesus. Goes on and says, in his boundless love and mercy, he, is ran he the ransom, freely gave. God has shown us his love. But his love is not only just a love for a season. It's boundless in the sense of it's got no limits. His mercy has got no limits. And we have seen that in Christ Jesus. How he had to even step to the point of death. Not just death, but death on a cruel cross. And he became the ransom for my sin. He now basically rescues me from the peace of darkness by him exchanging himself for me. And this is the reality that we see in Christ Jesus. He becomes the ransom. And that ransom, he freely gives it. It's not because he was weak or he could not 
rescue us in anything, but he saw that this was the way that would please God by him becoming the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. And he indeed has taken the sins of us who are believers. And for those who are seeking, it actually shows that your sins can be nailed to the cross if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and call on him as Savior. And humble yourself and know that your brokenness will lead you to an eternal separation from him. But God in his goodness has found a way, the man Christ Jesus, to rectify our brokenness. Stanza 3 says, I will praise my dear Redeemer, his triumphant power I'll tell, how the victory he has given over sin and death and hell. So now this is a new reality that we are in. We have singing of our Redeemer and what he's done on Calvary. We're seeing of where we were. Now this is the new reality that we are in. We are constantly praising God for the believer. We're praising him for what he's done for us, what he continues to do for us, and what he will, the time when he comes to take his waiting people home, he will finally redeem us. So we'll praise him constantly within our heart. Praise him. This is the new song beating in our heart. Us praising the Lord Jesus Christ of his goodness and what he's done for us and what he continues to do for us and what he will in the future do for us. And then it says, His triumph and power I'll tell. We're not just praising him in our hearts, but we're also telling that. We can tell that through preaching his word, through sharing our testimonies, but ultimately preaching the gospel to the lost. We have found the key to man's brokenness, but it will be very selfish of us to hide that. So we have to go out to the world and tell it. And that's also a mission that has been given towards us now who are disciples of Christ to tell of the power that Christ has has over taking somebody out of their darkness and bringing them into a new reality. So I say, I will, his triumphant power tell yes. And then the next part, he says, how the victory he has given over sin and death and hell and this is now the context of what we are telling and what we are saying is triumph is triumphant over we're telling that he has victory he has given us one we are the example two we're also saying he also has shown the victory which he has over sin death and hell and this was conquered on the cross and when we look to the cross this is what we see a savior who has rectified the brokenness of man, conquered the aspects of the curse of sin, conquered the aspect of death, which comes because of the result of sin, and conquered us and rescued us from the destination that we deserve to be, which is hell and separate from God, but now has a new reality for us, which is now glorified with him in heaven, in his presence, forever and ever. Stanza 4 says, I will sing of my Redeemer and his heavenly love for me. He from death to life has brought me, Son of God, with him to be. And I think this is the reality that we hold on to, the heavenly reality. That one day everything will pass away. But for the believer, their state is they will be with their, their Redeemer in heaven. So when we are singing in stanza 4, he said, I will sing of my Redeemer. His heavenly love for me. We're saying that his love is an eternal love, but it also gives us the reality of one day we'll be with him because we have eternal life, we will be with him in heaven. The next part says, He from life, he from death to life has brought me. We're singing this. The joy of the believer is that we are once dead, we've now been alive because of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, son of God, with him to be. He has brought me from death to life, but ultimately he's calling us to be in his presence forever. We'll be in the presence of the son of God and we will rejoice with him forever. And our heart, which we sing today, will also be exemplified when the time comes where we'll constantly sing 
of the joys of our believer. So when we look at this hymn, this hymn should bring a level of, ref of reflection towards us of the Redeemer and his wondrous love for us. We also can celebrate the brother who composed this uh, many years ago in the 1800s. And we can thank God for using him to the point of where we sing it in our churches and wherever we're trying to rejoice in the aspect of worship and to remember the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that even as we sing it going forward, that this should be within our hearts, seeing that the goodness of God has indeed reached mankind and that he's reached mankind personally towards us who are in Christ Jesus, but it continuously also reaches the ones who are lost. So we pray that the ones who are lost can come to the point of finding the Lord Jesus Christ as their Redeemer. So thank you for taking the time to listen to the review on I Will Sing of My Redeemer by Philip Paul Bliss. And we pray that you are encouraged by this work of this brother. We also thank God for the contribution that he has made to the Christian faith and we would like to give him his flowers on this Thursday. Thank you for taking the time to listen and until next time, God bless. Thank you.